Well, hello, this is uh, Chris back with the Ancient Scholar. <coughs> uh, still a little under the weather, so my uh, voice is still a little, uh, a little hoarse. <coughs> uh, excuse me for that. Anyway, I want to go ahead and uh, continue talking about this whole um, oxygen paramagnetism uh, subject that we'd, uh, or that I'd kind of brought up on the last video. And uh, we'll start <coughs> trying to make some sense of it. It may not be very intuitive, uh, but hopefully it'll make some sense nonetheless. So, uh, <coughs> I was just kind of picking up from where we left off that um, I asked a question that perhaps uh, the, what we were taught in, in, in real basic chemistry. Now, if you guys have taken taken a, a general chemistry sequence and you know gone on to, to, to take courses like organic chemistry and biochem, and analytical chem, and you know perhaps uh, uh, physical chemistry, uh, this video is going to be nothing new, nothing new at all. Uh, but this is more for the benefit of people that that perhaps um, don't have the benefit of taking. Of, of t having taking a, um, a a core chemistry curriculum, um, which is <clears throat> which is generally a two semester sequence in general chemistry, um, with a laboratory, um, with uh, you know perhaps engineering, physics, <coughs> and chemistry students uh, going on and taking additional courses. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So we talked about this whole concept of, of oxygen, uh, the the whole concept of an atom, um, the nucleus. The nucleus having a positive charge from the protons in it, and then the electrons basically inhabiting shells around the nucleus, like so. And we knew that the, the first shell could only hold two electrons, and then every shell thereafter uh, generally likes to get eight electrons in it. And this eight electrons is called an, an octet, and, and, and what Lewis uh, Predicted is that when a shell has met its octet, it's happy, and specifically when the outer shell, called the valence shell, has met its octet rule, where I have eight electrons, or one, two, three, four pairs of electrons, paired electrons, um, when the valence shell has met its octet, it's happy. Uh, generally, most atoms, with the exception of the uh, noble gases, uh, which are over here in the uh, group eight elements, um, they actually have a full octet and they're generally not chemically active. <clears throat> Most of our atoms, in fact, are um, do not have a, an octet uh, met and that, that is the case with oxygen. And so what we can have is we can have sharing of electrons among various atoms to meet the octet and it's actually the interaction of the valence electrons and the sharing and all that that leads to bonding. And um, this picture, uh, while not certainly not accurate, I, I think it, it is good for um, a wide variety of cases, uh, but it doesn't necessarily explain um, some of these other cases, like paramagnetism, certain types of bonding, um, carbon, for example. Um, the way carbon organic chemistry works isn't satisfactorily explained through uh, the Lewis dot structure. Um, so let's just go ahead, <coughs> excuse me, and add another level of complexity to this. And um, you guys would feel free to watch my videos on the quantum numbers and bonding and, and so on and so forth. I'm not really going to get into that kind of detail here. But what we realized back in, in the mid-1920s, 1926, or even before that, it was kind of been a, a process of realization. Um, somebody finally made a, a formula what we realize is that the electron behaves very, very differently. And, and, and act, in fact, all things that are very small, microscopic, um, behave very differently. They behave um, in a couple of different ways, depending on how we look at them. Uh, they can behave sometimes like a wave, and, and other times they can behave like a particle, a little billiard ball. And um, when we apply what we call classical uh, physics and treat everything like a little billiard ball, like a particle, the formulas that, that we had at that time didn't adequately explain what the electrons are doing, but only when we started treating the wave-like characteristic of an electron. And I know it's very difficult to imagine something like a human being or a ball or a bus or something with mass actually having wave-like properties, but everything does 
It's just we don't notice because it's so small. We don't really notice it in the macroscopic, the large world, but we certainly do on the microscopic world. And the formula, a formula that chemists use, it, um, known as a Schrodinger equation, a um, Austrian uh, by the name of Schrodinger, the rather interesting life <coughs> kind of came up with it. And I'm just going to go ahead and give you kind of the reduced um, version of it. Okay, so H hat psi equals E psi. 